Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the prelim fights for UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Gustafsson vs. Smith. So without further ado, let's get into our first fight on the prelims, our first fight on the cards. So on our first fight, we have in the welterweight division, Rostam Akman vs. Sergey Kan Kandozoko. Or I don't really know how to say the name, but Sergey Kanzoko. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with that, Kanzoko. But um, look at this fight, you got Rostam Akman, I think he's 5-0. Is a pro. He has a pretty lengthy amateur background in MMA. I think about ten, like ten plus fights in amateur. So he has way more fights in amateur, or twice, at least twice as many fights in amateur as he has in um the pros. I think five and zero oh and is a pro with like ten or and two or eleven and two is amateur. So pretty decent amateur background. He got Sergey Kanzoko, who's about twenty plus wins and about five losses. So let's look at this fight. There's a recent, um, like a quick adjustment or late replacement with Rostam Akman replacing um, Sergey Konzoko, the previous opponent. So it's a late replacement. He doesn't have the most experience inside as a pro. And look at Sergey Konzoko. He has way far more experience in the MMA. He's a young fighter. It's not like um, Akman will be significantly younger. Or Konzoko is just old, worn out fighter. One thing I do like about Rostam Akman is that he does have that hunger. He does have the desire. But I think it's a little bit too much too soon. And I think Sergey Kanzoko, this is a better striker, better overall fighter. I don't think Rostam Akuma really presents any real issues for Kanzoko as far as any technique, any area, strong areas, any weak areas that um Kanzoko will have. That Rostam Akuma will be strong, and I don't see him really being able to put him in those positions or really be able to really have to find success in those positions because I don't think those really his strong suits either way. So really, it's too much, too soon versus a guy who has far more experience. It's on short notice, and I think it's not like he's has that um, style to beat him. So uh, I think he's tough. I think he's going to go to decisions, but I'm going to go with Sergey Konzoko. So in this fight, I got Sergey Konzoko via decision. Now on to our next fight we have in the lightweight division, Joel Alvarez versus Danilo Bellardo. So look at this fight. I'm going to be straight up. Look at Bellardo's record. and wasn't most impressed. Um, really for some really low-tier competition. And really recently, not just like it was years ago, like his most recent opponent was like 15-8. And the guy before that was like, four and six or something like that. Really unimpressive records, really unimpressive skill sets. And he probably can butt into a good fighter, but I'm just not impressed right now. And kind of similar to Joel Alvarez in his last fight, I was saying his resume really hadn't impressed me too much. But his skill set against a, a fighter in Ismail Gulatov, who is a solid fighter, he was at least hold his own against that fighter and show that his skills, he belongs here. So right now, Gulatov is going to show me something that's really all about. Alvarez has shown me something that Bilardo has not. So I'm going to lean to Alvarez and then this fight, I got Joel Alvarez via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the light heavyweight division, Darko Stasiak versus Devin Clark. And this fight isn't too different from Devin Clark's last opponent, or his opponent who was, he was supposed to fight, but his opponent pulled out for whatever reason. But it's not too different from that matchup. You got a short, stocky fighter, pressure, heavy hands. Not a jumping, he doesn't jump in as much as out. He kind of walks you down. His last opponent, was like his opponent he was supposed to have at two cars ago, jumped in a lot. With his strikes, with his opponent, kind of just walks you down, pressure you, and like kind of just smothers you. Last heavy shots, takes you out. But I think with Devin Clark, he can do a similar thing. He can use his wrestling, tire those muscles of the, the short, stocky, strong fighter. And I think Clark is a big, strong fighter himself. And plus, he has a technique. So the strength and the technique, I had to worry about his chin. But his strength and his technique and his wrestling should be allowing him to grind out Stasiak, drain the, like, you know, just drain, like, tire those big muscles out wear him out, and grind him to a decision. Just avoid those big shots. Or don't weather those big shots well or deal with those. But I think the wrestling and the technique is going to outpower the strength and power. So in this fight, I got Devin Clark via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the women's featherweight division, B. Malecki versus Eduarda Santana. So in this fight, you got two fighters who really haven't been doing, I mean, don't have much of a resume right now. I think you could got... Their records combined isn't 10 fights, so they haven't fought very much. Both undefeated. You got one that's 3 0, you got one that's 2 0. But when I look at Edward or Santana, I think I just seen more technique from her. Like from the very short stuff we've seen from those two in those very short fights they had. But like Malecki, I think had two fights that ended in the first round. Edward Santana had like two finishes or like two decisions and one finish, though. And from what I've seen her fight, her technique looks cleaner, her footwork's cleaner, her jab's a little bit cleaner. Straight's a little bit cleaner. Like, it's overall her technique just a little bit cleaner than B. Malecki. Malecki has shown me at least submissions and striking, but it was a more of a defensive counter submission. I haven't really seen her offensively with her grappling. 
So all around is going to lead to the striking aspect. I think Edward Warda Santana just a little cleaner technically with her striking. But either way, they both had barely any fights, so they could both change a whole lot dramatically from what you've seen in those fights. But right now, I'm going to lead to Eduardo Santana just from the fact that her technique looked a little bit cleaner than Malecki. So in this fight, I got Eduardo Santana via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the lightweight division, Nick Hine versus Frank Camacho. So you got a fight between two veterans right here, been around the UFC for a good bit, been around the same rankings for a good bit. Camacho's been a bit welterweight and been at lightweight for a little bit now. But um, how do these two people match up? Nick Hines is a solid fighter. He's well-conditioned, good striking, good technique. But the one issue where he kind of lacks is, you know, the extra oomph, you know, to make him to get up the rank. He doesn't have the power, doesn't have the extra skill set where it's going to push him to, you know, really be like uh, an elite fighter. He's a good fighter. He has all, he's good everywhere, but he's great nowhere. Camacho, good fighter, is similar, no, not great anywhere. He has some solid power, solid, he's durable. Pushes up high pace. I mean, not, well, he's not, not a, necessarily high pace, but certainly he's in your face drawing big shots and constantly in your face landing big shots. Underrated grappling. What I think this fight comes down to is the fact that Nick Hyde really doesn't have any knockout power. I think he had like one knockout or one TKO in his whole career. And I think with Frank Camacho, he's a fight that you're going to need to gain that respect from. And I don't think Hines' footwork is good enough to, for him to avoid Camacho for three rounds. I think Camacho, for the most part, is going to be up in his face throwing body shots, throwing head shots. And if he wants to, I think he can win the grappling as well. And he's showing some pretty good top control. So I think his pressure, and if he wants to be even more effective, he can mix some grappling. I think he will probably mix in some grappling at times as he had in, in some of his other fights. Probably get some control here and there if he needs to edge around. But I'm not even more so just the lack of power on hind side and the forward pressure, the value and the heavy shots, landing the heavy shots and being the one going forward is going to win the fight for Camacho. And I don't think he's going to knock Hines out because Hines, you know, he might not be a knockout puncher. He's certainly not an easy guy to get put out. So it's going to be a it's going to be a good competitive fight. But the forward pressure, the heavy shots of Hines, I mean, of Camacho are going to win this fight. So in this fight, I got Frank Camacho via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the lightweight division, Stevie Ray versus Leonardo Santos. So Santos has been out for a good number of years. I think he hasn't been in the UFC. I mean, he hasn't fought in like three, probably three years. It's been a minute. I think he's beat Kevin Lee, then he beat um this other guy, I forget his name right now. And then he hasn't fought since then. Whether he can't find fights, whether he's trying to do this, whether he's trying to do that, either way, he simply just has not been fighting. And that's just what it is. So he hasn't been fighting. But as far as the two people match up, who cares about layoffs? Well let me say one other thing. He is also also on top of being on layoff, he's pushing forty. He's like thirty eight, thirty nine and he hasn't fought in like three years. So that might be a huge factor in this fight that's on the table or what's known or unknown what is known but yeah he has a fought in a good minute and he's old as far as fight experience he's not that old but as far as actual age he's just kind of old but um yeah Stevie Ray has some good striking he has some okay grabbing but more so sh- striking decent power and that's really what he is Leonardo Santos I think his striking has, has improved significantly since he was a grappler and over his time in May has started to improve well he's been able to strike with some decent strikers but I think this fight, he has, still has that other avenue because we've seen Stevie Ray's grappling not look the best. Joe Lozon was having his way with him a little bit until he started to fade against Stevie Ray. And Leonardo Santos is a much better grappler than Joe Lozon. I think Leonardo Santos could certainly hold his own with Ray, Stevie Ray on the feet, but I think if he wants to, he can always go back to his grappling. His striking might be rusty, but when you you grapple at the level he grappled at, and for as many years he grappled at, grappled, that grappling does not go away. I think at points... It's going to be a filling out process with the striking just for Leonardo, Leonardo Santos just to, you know, get him, fill him out and make him think it's going to be a striking matchup. Then mix in the grappling. And I think he just, like, first round and two, probably more so, this filling out process on the feet, kind of close. Then towards that second round, he gets that takedown. Like, later prior to that second round, he starts going for the grappling. Then third round, he follows off of that success that he had at the end of the second round and just gets him out of the third round. Once he gets him on the ground, secures the submission, I mean, secure position, secure submission, and takes him out of there. So in this fight, I got Leonardo Santos via third-round submission. Now to our prelim headliner we have in the women's bantamweight division, Tanya Evinger versus Lena Landsberg. So you got the former Victor Featherweight champion versus Lena Landsberg. So when I look at Lena Landsberg, it's not really like nothing about her skill set that really jumps off the table. 
But she, one thing about her, it's not about her skill set, it's about the fighter she is. She's a tough chick. She could take a lot of damage. She will go out in a fight. And you've seen in her in several fights, like when she was taking several, I mean, big shots from Cyborg and not quitting, taking big shots in this fight, big shots in that fight. You've seen her a lot of times in these fights. Her face is like it's about to fall off, but she's a tough chick. One of her, I said one of her best skill sets or one of her best things about her is, like I said, she's durable, she's tough, and she's got some good dirty balls. Like, so in that clinch against the cage, she can land some good shots, but her back's on the cage or her back's, uh, she has, like, when she's against the cage or has her opponent against the cage, she can land very good, very good in that position to land shots. Her footwork, not the best, but it really is just like, you know, really all those gritty fighter areas, she's good in those positions. But I think Evander, she's pretty good in those positions as well. She's also tough and gritty. She's also experienced, also a former champion. And then in the grappling, she's just significantly the better grappler. I think offensively and defensively with the takedowns, with the um, transitions, with the submission attempts. So I really think it's going to be like a tough, gritty fight. But once Tanya Avenger is able to get her down, I think it's just completely in Tanya Avenger's realm. And she just goes down and just submit her. I think it's going to happen. The first fight is going to be a good, fun um, slugfest. Then the second round, Tanya Avenger is going to be able to get a takedown. And once she's in her realm, Tanya Avenger is going to be... Pretty much one side, and Tanya Evanger is going to be able to get that submission. So in this fight, I got Tanya Evanger via second round submission. And that concludes my fight predictions for the prelims of UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Gustafsson versus Smith. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more videos. Peace.